Welcome to our five on five. We're pleased to be joined by Pam Marsh, Democratic candidate for Oregon House District Five. Pam, good to see you. Oh, Thanks thank so you so much for having me. My, my pleasure. So I'm sure many of our Ashland viewers are familiar with you as a city councilor there. Uh, now you're uh, you're running for to replace Peter Buckley. I am. Tell us a little bit about your background first. Well, I have what I describe as a pretty diverse background. I moved here in 1994 with my husband and four kids, and we moved from a fairly conventional life. I would describe it in Palo Alto to a sort of unconventional life in the Green Springs, which is the mountainous area east of Ashland. Sure. Um, we moved up there. We bought an inn, and we were part of that rural community um, for about 10 years full time. Mm. After after the first 10 years, we moved into Ashland, where we currently live. We lived there for 12 years. And at that point, um, I started working for nonprofits, which I've done for the last 10 years, and got involved in the city of Ashland on the Planning Commission, the Charter Review Commission, and for the last four years on the City Council. Okay. So we sort of have a foot in the small business world. We still own that business and operate it up in the Green Springs. And I also understand from a nonprofit perspective um, some of the struggles that our families really incur every single day trying to survive in our tourist-related economy. Sure. Okay. So, so city council, planning commission, mm -hmm. a lot of, lot of, uh, a lot of work with the city. Is mm -hmm. what, what are you most proud of in your time, uh, in your time there in those positions? You know, I think what I am most proud of is the fact that we have worked really well together. We have a city council that is very focused on doing our very best work. Um, delving into things, trying to come up with solutions that are as broad as possible, um, collaborative as possible. And I, I think we've really demonstrated to the community a, a very solid focus on good decision making. And I'm proud of that. Running to replace Peter Buckley, as I mentioned, uh, you first run at state level politics. Is, mm -hmm. is this, was that something you always knew you wanted to do? And how did that come about? It was not. Actually, I thought Peter would be there forever, and I would have been happy if he decided to stay forever. Um, but when he decided to leave, I looked at the issues that are in play in Salem right now, and I realized we're just at this tremendous point of transition, even I would describe it as transformation in some of the institutions that affect life here in Southern Oregon and certainly across the state. And the opportunity right now that exists to really um, look at those institutions, to build them, to invest, and to make sure that our families and our communities have the tools and resources that they need to really survive as the world changes around us um, was too great of an opportunity. Okay. We're going to take a quick break. Sure. Uh, much more in a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back to our Five on Five. We're going to here with Pam Marsh, a Democratic candidate for Oregon House District Five. So, Pam, you're you're an Ashland Democrat. Mm -hmm. You're you're now uh, as a city councilor. You're now expanding your your reach, if you will, yeah. running for running for the house into the districts, into Talent, Phoenix, and even parts of Medford. Well, Talent, Phoenix, Jacksonville, and the Applegate too. Yeah, we okay, go all yes, the way out there. it's quite a bit larger than Ashland. Right. So, and and of course, Ashland, as we all know, has a more liberal base, if you will. What makes you think uh, you will appeal to to people outside of Ashland? Well, you know, I've been running for this position now for 10 months, and I've had a tremendous number of conversations with people across the district, and I really hear some very common themes. The, the desire to invest in education, to really make sure that we are taking care of children at a very early age, that birth to age five-year-old period, the importance of really supporting Southern Oregon University in its transition to an independent organization. Um, we've talked about the fact that we've begun healthcare transformation, but we have a long way to go before we have a system that is really accessible and affordable to all. We've talked about the need to invest in transportation, in our infrastructure, our bridges, our roads, to make seismic improvements in the event that we have a Cascadian uh, event. So what I am hearing across the board are really common themes. It's really the importance of investing um, in families and communities, and I think that I've heard that enough to know that uh, it's a it's a uh, statement that appeals across the district. I want to want to get your uh, feelings on on Measure 97. Mm -hmm. if, if Measure 97 doesn't pass, the legislature could be uh, tasked with some difficult decisions. That's and, right. And, and if elected, how? What is your feeling on 97? And and if elected, and, and if it doesn't pass, where would you uh, look to make cuts, if you will? Well, I do support Measure 97. I think it is not perfect, but it is the tool that we have in front of us to start reversing a pattern of disinvestment um, that really started with measure, the measures in the 1990s to reform property tax. Um, we, it is no wonder at this point that we have class sizes um, and graduation rates near the bottom of the 50 states because we've been on a slow path toward um, not supporting our schools um, and, and uh, our institutions. 
If Measure 97 does not pass, we will face about a, a billion and a half dollar deficit right off the bat. Um, and that means cuts. And it means cuts in the very fundamental services that states pr provide and that our, um, that our folks expect. It'll mean cuts in schools. Um, it'll mean cuts in the healthcare transformation that, we, that is underway. Um, and frankly, we'll have to start looking for alternative sources of, of revenue um, because I just don't know how we really provide a government that, that meets the expectations of our people if we don't have more money. Good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. Great to Thank see you again. Thank you very much. All right. Stay with us. We'll be right back.